So as you guys can see from this uh, title slide, I believe in uh, lots of change. So the next change, the next person to walk through this door, which just happened as I was speaking, look at that, four people. Turns out it's the perfect time to start telling you guys about stuff. Um, so my name's Kevin O'Brien. I work for Kiva. I've worked there about three and a half years. Prior to that, I worked in higher ed. Some of you guys may know me from organizing a lot of higher ed meetups and um, some of the California higher ed stuff, as well as the higher ed groups that came out of, I think, the at San Francisco DrupalCon years back. Um, I still love higher ed, but I think I found my calling in doing something a little more uh, non-profity, worldwide focus kind of stuff instead of local focus. Uh, so that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about today. Um, I'm also super transparent, so if you have any question, you can do me ask me anything um, at the end. I have absolutely no qualms. If I get fired, then that means that we're not following our mission at Kiva to be transparent. Um, and I'm sure Srikanth, my former colleague at SFSU there in the middle, he knows all about my transparency and how the uh, bureaucracy there felt about it. <laughs> um, oh, also, if you've seen one of my prior presentations, there's been a lot of lolcats, and if you came for the lolcats, you're going to be a little disappointed this time. Um, I'm not guaranteeing there's no lolcats, but there will be less, much, much less. Uh, because what I really want is everybody here to leave with a lot of inspiration from this talk. Um, and I'm actually kind of glad that it's a little smaller group, not too bad sized crowd, because it's easier to inspire a smaller group than it is to inspire a huge crowd, because it's, it's easier to focus on the things that you guys can actually do to change the world, and I hope that if you don't have that feeling that you can go change the world today, that by the time the end of this talk rolls around, you're going to have that feeling that there is some small thing that you can do right now that will, that will give you that inspiration and, and innovation to change the world. Um, and, and on that note, they, they were going to send our president, Primal, here, but he, he insisted that we give everybody free Kiva cards uh, if he was going to come. And, I think uh, they, they couldn't quite afford that for 3,000 people. So <laughs> he sent me in his stead, but I'm, I'm happy to inspire you, and I think I'll tell you more about Drupal than he would. The best he could tell you is that uh, he was so, so excited for weeks on end when we switched from Blogger and WordPress, boo, over to uh, Drupal for our blog because it actually allowed us to do commenting and get a conversation going that hadn't been happening on our blog post before. So he, if nothing else, was really excited about Drupal in his own way, even if he didn't really understand exactly what it meant. Um, and he did lovingly bring this uh, DrupalCon, uh, DrupalCon logo back for me, sticker, so I could fill up my laptop. All right. <coughs> so that said, um, I don't know how all of you guys came to Drupal. But the way I came about it was back in 03, actually, I was uh, doing AmeriCorps in Boston and teaching kids how to make websites. And I had this inkling that there had to be a better way. Uh, I'm pretty sure we were doing front page uh, to teach them. And it was absolutely brutal. But they were still making websites out of it. So we were still accomplishing something. But I thought, you know, there has to be a better way to get people connected to putting content up on the web in an easier way. And since then, there has been, but the, the solution I found in 2007 was Drupal when I was working for SF State. And it started all as a need for the internal IT department to make it so their content could be edited, which you would think nowadays is, is so simple, but back then they were doing flat HTML files on an FTP server. And I'm still convinced, and Shrikant and the crowd there could probably tell you that there are still some sites at the university, flat HTML files on an FTP server. <laughs> but fortunately, um, we moved the site over, and this amazing thing happened, this, this sort of groundswell. Some of the professor friends I, I knew there, one who became actually um, a seat on the Drupal Association board for a little while, Samir Burma, they, they asked, oh, can we also put our sites on Drupal? And two or three sites later, you know, a lot of struggle. It, it started to, to gather this momentum. Until then, it was basically, can we put the main functionality of the university on Drupal, the portal where the students come and do their transcripts and do their uh, class schedules and all this stuff? 
Um, can we put that up there so that we can have all this functionality? And this is at a place that has never had software that wasn't like, you know, gone through a procurement process that took two years. And it just kind of, it blew some people's minds. Some people couldn't handle it. And um, I think a few people actually uh, quit when they realized that uh, Drupal didn't have Java ESR 1.5 specs for everything they wanted to do. But that was okay because we moved forward. And what was really important to me was we created this change of, from the ground up, people could come in and make their site be in Drupal and handle it themselves, not be reliant on IT anymore, and could dip their foot in this, this technological water and, and make their own change and, instead of relying on the, the bureaucracy bringing it down. And so for me, that was a, that was a very inspiring moment. And ultimately something that left me inspired when I came to Kiva about three and a half years ago. And that's, uh, I had a friend at the university who was a volunteer translator for Kiva and told me all about it. And unfortunately, um, she passed on, but a wondrous thing happened where one day I got a note in my inbox from a friend there at Kiva that um, I'd kept in touch with over her memorial fund, which was doing loans, and said that there was a Drupal position open. So I, I thank Drupal for having brought me to Kiva and for getting to tell you today about how we're using it to do some, some really interesting things there out in the world. Uh, one small loan at a time, one small change at a line. And uh, these, these small incremental improvements to solve these big problems. And <laughs> I know some of you guys out there are probably facing that. There are problems, they're big, they're hard, and I want you to break those problems down like we have into can we solve world poverty? I believe so. Can we solve it today? No. Can we solve one person's problem in poverty today? Yes, probably. And that's what I'm going to move on to about um, thinking about how every one person can get involved. Uh, perhaps the most well-known person here that could get involved being Dries, who, as it just so happens, has been a lender on Kiva for about three years as well. And our lovely benevolent dictator has actually done 73 loans. So he's at least put in a pretty good deal of money in it. So I'd like to think that he believes in it. I haven't talked to him yet about it, but I'm pretty sure with that amount of investment that he's he's got something going there. Um, and there's other folks, Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, some big talk show hosts. They, they've written in and told us about how they have found the Kiva experience and, and started making loans on it. And I'll, I'll tell you more about how that works, but I I just, after this morning's keynote where we were talking about big companies and how they're changing Drupal, I wanted to, you know, get back to that idea of, of us individuals changing Drupal, because for me, that's, that's what the Drupal community is about, and that's what Kiva is about, is individuals making loans and changing the world and being empowered. And even at Kiva, we've had this debate of big companies um, coming in and sort of providing a lot of capital for us to go do big projects and make change. Um, one, HP actually, which has done this huge promotion over the last, uh, I guess, three months or so. In fact, they almost brought our website down this morning when uh, 6,000 of them got it, uh, came rushing to the site all at 8.30 after about 10,000 people got an email asking them to make a loan. Uh, we barely survived. A, it, a bot scraper was also hitting us from China that uh, was making it a, a kind of <laughs> iffy situation, um, which made my distraction from the keynote a little bit. But what I caught on there was, you know, big companies making change. And what I was thinking was some people like Larry Garfield were tweeting about, you know, uh, maybe the negative of that. And I think there's, it's a neutral thing. They can, they can help us in some ways. They can hinder us if they lose that individualism of how we can make change. And uh, I just, I have one quote though from somebody at HP that, that made a loan with us and totally changed my perspective about sort of the individuals getting involved from something like that. We had a blog post on the Drupal blog um, about the, the uh, office dog. We have dogs in the office, which is amazing. If your company doesn't, I, you should go just badger your CEO until they let you do it because it's, it's purely the most efficient product, productivity thing I think we've ever done at Kiva is allowing a bunch of dogs. Um, but they said, Otis is adorable and he's going to be a household name as I share the HP and Kiva updates with my family and beloved four-legged companion Frodo. Thank Kiva and HP for all you're doing. Triple exclamation mark. So when somebody uses three exclamation marks, I feel like they're pretty excited about um, what's happening there. And that, that gets 
to the heart of what all this is about is crowdsourcing. And now you might not be able to read all that, but you can basically tell <coughs> um, Kiva and Drupal have something pretty in common, right? We're crowdsourcing all these changes, uh, whether it's code changes, documentation changes, um, putting groups together, putting Drupal cons and bad camps and other things together. Um, we're, or on Kiva, where we're either directly making loans to people out in the world, or we are working with partners out in the world to make those loans. And, and essentially what we're providing in both cases is a connection to this, this community to make that change. And I think um, we've both experienced sort of the, the growth where Drupal and Kiva are both uh, approximately 10 plus years old now and have been able to expand out across the world. I think uh, there was a question this morning, the keynote about work in China and various places like that. We've luckily uh, were able to work in India uh, now as of maybe about a year and a half ago, but the challenge is there. There's so many challenges legal, uh, logistical, that are hard to overcome. But what excites me is I, you know, it seems like almost every morning I wake up and come to Kiva and we're in a new country. I, just yesterday we were posting loans in uh, Vanua Vanuatu. I knew I would mess up the name. But um, just to think this place out in the middle of nowhere with somebody that you would probably never get a chance in the world to meet is telling their story, telling how they're going to use this loan to provide solar power for their household so that they can uh, make some you know, incremental change in their life for the better. And it's not going to get them out of poverty right away, but this loan is going to make their life you know, that much better of being able to charge their cell phone, being able to provide light at night. Um, and that's how I think of, of commits with Drupal, with modules and all this. It's, it's incremental changes to make all of our lives easier of putting content out there up on the web and providing us with that connection, um, whether it's the Drupal groups that I hope all of you are part of, and if you're not, you should definitely join one. Um, unless you find me too overly exciting, then don't join the San Francisco group, because I, I think I'm still a moderator on it. Um, <laughs> and uh, on Kiva, if, if you're not already on there, obviously I recommend you become a lender on Kiva. It's very easy. Uh, you can sign up. You don't even have to make a loan, but I would really insist you do. But what's really interesting is the people that have signed up and joined a team have made three times as many loans as those who have just joined Kiva and not got connected to other people. So this really showed that this connection amongst people is is like this this thing that just catalyzes people to act, right? And to me, uh, the, this connection goes deeper because I actually met um, the people who did a study that found that people make 3x more loans on Kiva this way was at the University of Michigan. And the way we got connected to them was that uh, Daniel Zhu, who does the recommender module for Drupal, uh, back at the San Francisco DrupalCon in 2011, was giving a birds of a feather about how to use this. And then we started chatting. And it turned out that his professor was considering doing a research study on Kiva for these loans. And since we try and put as much of the loan data up as possible without violating people's privacy on our API so you can just pull it all down, they were able to do this and create a scientific research paper showing the effects of this, this team and social connection and how you know one message could just drive a whole bunch of people that hadn't previously just left money in their account to come up and, and lend it out again. My favorite of that is, of course, the Flying Spaghetti Monster team. If you're not familiar with the Flying Spaghetti Monster, I'm, I'm sad that uh, he hasn't entered joyfully into your life, but somebody will post up a loan that has noodles for sale in it, and then all of a sudden people will swarm in and all go fund it. And it's, it's just a great thing. And, and along with Pirate Talk, if you like Pirate Talk, you should join that group. Um, <laughs> and not only that, we also have found partners through Drupal, there was one that uh, got sent out with the Drupal Association newsletter in Kenya just a couple months ago, and I emailed them and I said, "Hey, you guys are using Drupal. It looks like you're doing, you know, some of the work that we usually do. Would you like to partner with us?" And they were like, "Yes, absolutely. This is exactly what we need is some Kiva capital." So we're working on talking to them about becoming an experimental partner. So it's it's just the more I delved into this, the more and more I saw the connection 
not just between individuals out there, but between Drupal and Kiva, and how it's trying to create this same goal and this same impact. Speaking of impact, um, oops, there we go. So again, maybe you might not be able to see everything on this chart, but you can see the, the Drupal team on Kiva has lent out uh, greater than 20,000. Um, you can see all the countries that they've lent to. And I like to think of that as um, this, this change that is like the issue queue, right? We're, it's, it's sort of insurmountable to think of there's probably 5,000 loans on the site right now. I think we'll make you know, 150,000 or probably 20,000 loans this year through Kiva. And you look at the bug queue and you see thousands upon thousands of these as well, and you think, you know, can I, can I really make change by just doing one small thing? And, I mean, at first it seems uh, like that's not possible, especially if you read through some of the issues. I had one, I think there was an accessibility uh, bug on core that ended up being 315 posts long. And it seemed like something was never going to change there. But eventually that change got into a D8 patch and, and things worked out. And I think that's the same thing with lending on Kiva is, you, is you're making these small changes and you're looking for that locality, that city, that country to start seeing improvements. And you have to wait for the research to come along and show you that that's happening. So it's, it can be slow and frustrating sometimes, but when it does happen and when you do see those reports, you're just, you're overwhelmed, or at least I am overwhelmed by, by all the awesome that's happening out in the world, whether it's, you know, um, one of our partners that's giving an education loan to a kid that otherwise wouldn't be able to go to school, or providing clean water hand-washing stations to people that otherwise don't have access to clean water, all these innovative things that I wouldn't even thought we've gotten loans out for, when originally I just came to Kiva and thought it was for farm loans and people, um, you know, the typical starting your, your business of like a, a food vendor and whatnot. And there's, <coughs> there's many more than I could possibly ever describe to you. Uh-oh. <laughs> and no, I don't have a meeting right now, hopefully. Um, so on to where, thinking of that uh, being out there in the world, there are, as you can see, a... a definite similarity between all these Drupalers out there having their meetups and, and all these Kiva loans um, where they're available. And <coughs> I don't want to dwell too much on it. Obviously, you can see we're across the world, um, and some places we're not, but we're working on being. But just to give you that sense of, of being out there in and, and place, like as you can see here, it's a little hard to see in this uh, this green and blue slide, but the blue dots are a um, lenders on Kiva, and there's yellow dots that are hard to see, but those are the borrowers. And the green lines are this connection from the lenders to the borrowers, um, where we've we've shown you know how that money is flowing from the places that has it to the places that don't. And there's actually uh, up here. A, a single loan to somebody in Austin. So just to think that we there really are loans happening everywhere. This one is um, maybe not what you would consider your typical loan because I'll show you some later. You might be thinking of a woman in Mongolia running her greenhouse or a woman in Uganda selling fish, um, which is how a lot of our loans are. But there's also small businesses right here in Austin, Texas that are in need of capital to get going to fulfill their dream, like Christina with her bus stop shop uh, to sell antiques, and somebody that otherwise, through the banking system, could not get access to the capital to start their business, right? So instead, they turn to you, the crowd, and ask that if you guys believe in them, to put $25 in, or even put $5 in, to, to fund them directly. And that's also one of the differences of how Kiva originally started versus where Kiva is moving towards now. And I think, in some ways, how Drupal is starting to go as well is <coughs> we originally needed lots of partners across the world and still do and have, um, I think, approximately 340 partners right now across 75 countries. And this is what allows us to go out and to say, rural Mexico, somebody drives four hours on a dirt road to a little village and makes a $500 loan to somebody that otherwise wouldn't have the money to buy the materials they need to fix up their house so that the rainwater isn't leaking in every night. So it's, it's, it's definitely those kind of loans. That story is true across uh, 
you know, same thing in a, a hut in Vietnam, three hours outside of uh, the capital, or um, when I was in Mongolia and we took a two-hour ride um, through the the sort of uh, sections of Gur surrounding the the um, main part of the capital. But it's also here directly in the U.S. You don't have to go to all those places to see this. Um, but those partners are what allowed us to do that out here. And here in the U.S., we're directly connecting people one-on-one. -on -one. So when you go fund a loan, it's, once it's been funded, it's going directly into that person's PayPal account, and they can move on to going and buying the things they need to get their business going. What's really interesting is Kenya is actually ahead of us on this. With the loans we're doing there directly to people, we're using M-Pesa, which is a cell phone uh, payment system. Some of you may know it, some of you may not, but you can basically use SMS messages to send money back and forth to people. And this is one of the predominant ways that people are actually transacting in Kenya and in some various other sub-Saharan African countries. And we try it. We would love to do that in the U.S. too, but I feel like the uh, U.S. is actually behind. We didn't have many as many people with apps and other cell phone stuff to do this. So it was really interesting to see them leap ahead and, and make it so that we could have a farmer out in rural Uganda receive an SMS, your loan has been funded, here's the credits on your phone directly. They can just go right to their local vendor, exchange that out for money or exchange that out for goods and services. And the whole thing has happened, you know, directly after somebody back probably in the U.S. or in Europe has put that last $25 in to fund their loan. It's, it's this amazing thing that's happening. And, and so that's about maybe 5% of our loan capital now versus 95% is still with partners. But what's happened is we've moved towards um, smaller partners, experimentals, letting people have these small credit lines up to individuals and, and trusting the individuals to do it without needing the partners in places that they're not required. <clears throat> and I think that that can be true of Kiva with, I'm sorry, with Drupal as well, with all the partners out there that are making um, Drupal happen, like we were talking about this morning, uh, when I think the question was, what about all the small businesses and stuff connecting people? I think these are really important components, uh, but I think the focus was too much on the big companies. What's really about is all, all of you and all the individuals that are out there making change. Um, so that's, yeah, that's enough about Kenya kicking our butt on cell phone payments. Uh, Drupal loan. This is, I don't know that you guys could get as excited about this as I was, but one day we had a guy come in uh, who had a company called Collaborative Benefit, and he was working with a group called The Last Mile, which is a group for ex-convicts to enter back into the workforce. And they basically were providing training, support, et cetera, but they needed capital to help people start businesses to get back into the workforce because a lot of ex-convicts are actually, it's very hard to get hired, you know, there's a lot of mistrust. And this was a great, like, such a great way to say, there are people out there that believe in you, that are going to put your money, put their money into a loan for you and show that even if the banks and corporations don't believe that you can do this, uh, people, individuals do, and their loans got funded, and their loans got paid back, and their businesses went well, and with Tulio's particular business, uh, he actually wanted to further expand this job network, so he set up a job marketplace for ex-cons, and he, he used the money to train himself on using Drupal um, so that he could build that website and, and get that going. And that's um, where I like to think that there's, there's so much that we can reach out there. And thinking about reach, <coughs> um, oh, sorry, I guess there's a little trouble with that slide. But the idea is, um, just like Drupal is serving up 6% of websites or so right now. It you know, depends on your methodology. But there's so many more websites out there that we could be serving up, um, that we could be connecting people, content creators, to this, this wonderful product. It's the same way with microfinance. Um, there's about 6% that are being reached of the total that are unbanked in the world. So if you imagine um, approximately 2.5 billion people that don't have a bank account, don't have access to normal functions like loans and stuff that you and I often have access to, uh, microfinance is only providing about 
one, 150 million people with that access as it currently stands. And Kiva is only 1.3 million or so of those um, of that total microfinance pie. And there's a lot of different players in there, and there's there's for profits and non profits and um, in, uh, NGOs and all kinds of people that are trying to get people connected. But you can just see there's just such a such more thing, uh, connection that needs to happen to get all these people involved. And but that's why I'm hoping to inspire you guys to either get involved with Kiva or or think about how in your space whatever problem you're trying to solve, there's probably so many people that don't have any idea that there's something like this, there's something like Drupal, there's something like Kiva, there's something out there that can solve their problem, and they're just waiting to get connected to those people that will solve their problems. Um, <coughs> and and it's, a, uh, it's also interesting that it's, it's this, um, just a website, right? It's, it's ultimately we're reaching people through just a website, just the front end to, to get people this way. It's, 30% of that, I think, is running on Drupal now. But the amount of work that goes into putting that website together of all the people, all of our um, staff that are traveling out across the world, all of our volunteers that are going and living in, say, Chile or Bolivia or you know wherever, we're living and working with the partners, going and visiting borrowers, that's... I, it's, it begins to build into this idea that there's, it's all interconnected, and Drupal is the same way, right? As you guys have seen, this is, it's not just a website when you build with Drupal. It's a community, it's modules, it's themes, it's all these things that need to come together to create something wonderful. And that's kind of why need all of you people to join Kiva, make loans if you haven't, because that's what's enabling all these pieces to come together that and you know just supporting nonprofits like Kiva and not just Kiva. Uh, another one that I love, Mercy Corps actually did a wonderful presentation on using Drupal. Uh, I think it was two years ago at a DrupalCon, and you can just see that inspiration happening um, among these nonprofit workers as well. And and Drupal for Good boffs and all this, it's it's so often that tool that that lets you. Um, that you that you've chosen to to do these things, and so choice here. Um, I just love this uh, this unicorn uh, rainbow loan that uh, our QA person put up the other day, and I, <laughs> I had to throw that guy up there. Um, but much like you get to choose the modules that you use to build your site, you get to choose the borrowers on Kiva, uh, this free marketplace where it's all about whose story you want to support. And I think something like, um, it's hard to say, some of our loans get pre-supported through the partners, so we're just backfilling that loan. Um, a large percentage are not going to happen if people don't fund them. And then especially those peer-to-peer -peer loans I was talking about absolutely won't happen if people don't fund them. And so it's good in the sense that you get this choice to go see a loan on its merits and say, this, this person is obviously doing something good for their life. I want to support them. Or there's maybe sometimes, like I saw a loan one time, uh, there was a retired general in Tanzania who was asking for a loan for a plasma TV. And there was this great debate that happened within Kiva of, like, is that a loan that we should really be supporting? Like, is that, um, you know, helping this guy get out of poverty? Is it just a consumption loan? <coughs> and ultimately... The loan expired. People didn't fund it. And I was very happy with that. I think the people that posted it maybe weren't quite as happy. But it was a important showing that choice is what matters here. And it's the same thing with Drupal. When I created my first module, Saved FTP, it was just scratching my own itch, but I wanted to share that with the Drupal community. It was, um, again, dealing with we had flat HTML files on an FTP server and dealing with this uh, mentality that, oh, we can't put everything in Drupal, we don't understand it yet, we'd like to still do, like, have our HTML site, but you guys could edit your content in Drupal. So we put together this idea that, okay, well, we'll do that, and we'll just ship it out, and so I created this module, Saved FTP, which went up on the Drupal site, and I remember there was, I got flack from some community member who was d running through modules and like, well, this is too similar to XYZ module, and it turned out it actually wasn't. He just misunderstood. But it was, it was one of those things where 
a bunch of people came in and was like, no, actually, like this this solves my need. I need this as well. And the module got to stand, and it stands in that free marketplace of, of Drupal modules out there. And I don't know. I, I think I have four or five now, very minor modules, uh, Delete All and some others. But <coughs> they're... Um, it's it's so awesome to see that that process of things that are good float to the top, and ki for Kiva it's that same way. Those loans that are good float right up to the top, get funded right away, and those borrowers can come back knowing that being confident that they're going to get funded again if they need a, a lo another loan later on or a loan after that, and they're making progress in their life, right? So that's now why I want to talk to you about progress in the Drupal space for us. Uh, get a little technical here, so if you're non-technical oriented, you can feel free to close your ears. But it's also still an interesting story. This is why I said not just 7.x. They only gave you the choice 7.x, 8.x, or 9.x for your, your talk to be about. Uh, lo and behold, Kiva's actually still using 5.x in a certain case. I imagine somebody out there is also using 5.x or 6.x. Any of you guys not on 7 yet using something older than 7? You can raise your, yeah, yeah, all right. I'm not alone, right? Um, but we are moving, uh, or we have moved a bunch of it to 7. But it, what was really interesting was why was it so difficult to move to 7? Because people were so happy with this Drupal 5 instance that it was solving their needs. And on the back end, I mean, my sole job for quite some time was maintaining and fixing up uh, this Drupal 5 instance. And I couldn't understand when I actually met the volunteers that were using it, they were like, oh, yeah, this software is so great. There's nothing out there I've used like it. Like, it's just easy. It works. I can go in, and I can do my function, and it just makes me happy. And I'm like, really? Because, cause like, it's it's five-year-old code, and CCK is breaking all over the place because it can't handle this array that's now got hundreds of thousands of items in it. And they're like, no, no, we really like this. We don't understand what you just said, but we really like this. <laughs> And um, it, it is true that it's, it's held up well over time. Um, of course, originally, Chapter 3, I think, actually built it for us, but it was um, subcontracted out way, way back before I came. And I believe there was some consternation there over getting the final product. But we ended up with this great platform. And also what it did, like at SFSU, of moving stuff to Drupal, is it took people out of email and spreadsheets of how they were solving this problem before we, we were um, posting loans up in five languages, and we needed to put them in English so people could actually read the story, get, you know, get connected to the person they were funding, but there was no way you could expand that out. Like, we'd have to hire uh, 20 people to be able to do that full-time staff, right? So we created this volunteer network, and this volunteer network uses this tool to come in, look at the loan, um, and just go in and use the internationalization functions of Drupal to <coughs> sorry, change, change the loan use description into English, change the body into English, and then also check to make sure that like, everything's um, meeting our guidelines. Like We don't want uh, borrowers' last names or direct locations in, because you don't, as much as it's awesome and their businesses are awesome, if you can imagine, it's like if you said where Dries is going to be tomorrow at a certain time. Uh, you probably have 40 people rushing him trying to get their question, right? And if our borrower's trying to do a business, we don't want people rush, you know, lenders going and being like, hey, you know, it's great, I lent you a loan. Um, <coughs> there's, there's a great connection, and often our partners will set up times for people to come visit, but it's all, like, you know, set up ahead of time so somebody's business doesn't get overrun by over, overjoyous people, although it has happened on occasion. I think usually the borrowers have been pretty happy. Uh, there's lots of smiles and, and connected photos um, and there's even a book out there, if you ever want another inspiring story, it's called The Bank of Bob. Um, and there's this guy, Bob, who traveled the world uh, visiting Kiva borrowers uh, with a very intentional plan to do so and to write a book about it. And he talks about that connection that gets created from all those loans that he's done. And he's also formed a team that's become one of the biggest teams on Kiva and has done, I think, over $3 million in loans now. It's something pretty incredible. But this is this is all, you know... Drupal is what enabled this. Drupal is what took this out of spreadsheets. Drupal is what took this from them somehow managing to do 300 loans a month that way to now doing 15,000 loans a month running through this system. And then <coughs> with the new Drupal 7, doing it in context using services, uh, which was really intriguing to me, again in the keynote this morning, was talking about 
Drupal moving forward to using services and RESTful APIs and stuff where you're using Drupal as a framework and as a backend, but not necessarily as your, your theme layer, your viewing layer. And that's actually already what we're doing at Kiva. And what I think is really cool is leveraging the existing services API module, serving up the content that way, pulling it from the API directly into the space on the website where it needs to be, and allowing our content editors and our translators to go in and directly edit that right in place, right, right where um, it's eventually going to end up on the site. And it's so much easier for them and so much easier for us than trying to build a system that looks almost the same in Drupal and pulling your hair out with theme render functions, you know, sometime in the middle of the night. Not, you know, that I've ever done that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this move. I'm really excited about Drupal 8 and its internationalization functions that are going to make this even easier than it already is. Um, but I, you know, if you guys are struggling with that same, that same problem of people who tell you, well, this Drupal thing I don't understand, or it's going to be a different system, or you know, consider that you could actually go ahead and make that leap to using services and, and doing everything in place like we're doing here and the volunteers love it because it's just, you know, they want to see the loan as it's going to be so that they can know they're making it perfect for you as the lender to come in and see exactly that person's story as they want it to be presented. Um, but we're also doing your normal Drupal stuff. We're serving up, uh, I think, every, almost all of our sort of static content stuff is now run through uh, our D7 instance. Um, but we're also doing something neat of campaigns now, this used to take a couple engineers, maybe a month, to go set all the things up on the back end so that we could have a campaign for, say, a Los Angeles launch or this uh, Kiva City Detroit or working with a new partner like CamFed, which, side note, CamFed is so amazing. I was just reading their stories on our blog last night, and they were talking about how they not only do they give educational loans, but they they like go so far above and beyond. There was a little boy that stopped showing up to class, and they talked about um, <coughs> all the, the teachers wanted to figure out why he wasn't showing up to class. They had done this education alone. They were trying to change his life. And they went and talked to the father, and he said, well, we have a farm. We have to run. He needs to do his chores. So instead of just like leaving it at that, they said, okay, we're going to send a bunch of the kids to go over to his house every day help do the chores, and then they can all come back to class after the chores are done so that everybody can get an education. And it was just like <coughs> this amazing, you know, going above and beyond thing. And that's, that's how I feel about the Drupal community as well. It's like constantly going above and beyond to make everything better. <coughs> and that's what we're doing here is we, we made everything, putting all these up better by using Drupal, by letting them put all that in the back end, what loans do, et cetera, et cetera. And we get this nice page of um, the campaign on the front end. And someday, I hope, like Mercy Corps showed in their presentation, they let people create their own fundraising campaigns. I really want to use uh, Drupal to make that happen. And I think some of the people at like Kiva would as well. It's, it's going to take a little work. But I'm, I'm hoping sometime we can do that, because it's not just you know, about what we at Kiva can figure out will inspire you, but it's also about what you're already inspired by and drawing other people into that. And then just something else neat. Uh, so I mentioned that we're serving up a lot of our static content on Drupal. <coughs> this is the case here on our About page. This is um, one of the first tasks, actually, at Kiva as a software engineer uh, when you came three or four years ago was you were supposed to go make a commit um, to change the code for the team page to add your bio. So whoops, Drupal got rid of that because then you could just go edit the page and you didn't have to wait two weeks for your bio to show up when the next release of the website happened. <laughs> but uh, this, this is being served up and this is actually, this particular page is coming through the services API and as soon as a change happens in Drupal, we do a call back to the website and say clear the cache, which is in memcache, show the latest version. If for some reason some, it doesn't or somebody feels like there's uh, something on the back end that still needs to be cleared, there's a clear cache link on the top right there for people who are admins, as well as a, um, a notice to them showing them where that content is coming from. And it's just, it's so drastically improved the workflows at Kiva for people to be able to go in and, and change things. I mean, it's, it's kind of odd to think about because you figure everybody's doing uh, editing content in a CMS these days, but it was just three years ago, everything was in code. Um, 
<coughs> and hopefully that's inspirational to anybody that still needs to go through that migration process of getting into a CMS like Drupal. It's it's definitely doable and not not impossible. And and there's ways like this to make it less onerous on your content editors and creators. And it actually one of the great things too about some of this stuff, like using the services API, came out of our innovation iteration at Kiva. I don't know about the companies you guys work for, but one of the companies you may be aware of, Google has a 20% time, or at least they used to. I, I know some engineers there that feel like they're not getting that anymore. And they would get to spend this time to work on whatever they thought would be useful for Google. Kiva has an innovation iteration where they're doing this as well, uh, but we get a full two weeks to build basically anything will be valuable to Kiva. And we've done all kinds of amazing things like save search and uh, Kiva Live and Kiva Social that's come out of this. Um, and I might show you a video if we get a chance um, of something like that that's happened. But definitely, uh, this this room for innovation is was perfect for bringing something like uh, Drupal in. And of course, internationalized content, which I just wanted to you know give a brief showing that uh, we're using that for for doing that not just for translating loans, but also for our content here. You can see the the French on the this side and the the English on the other and how our content editors are able to easily do that with, with Drupal's tools and using the services API again, along with a custom module that I wrote that I think I put a patch in for up on Drupal.org, but if not, I should, which is using services token to make all those calls authenticated so that you can, you can pull those via the services API without having to rely on passwords and all that. Um, so that's, that's a lot of stuff, but as we're <coughs> drawing to time coming up, I want to talk about the ways that you guys can contribute and, and the ways not just to contribute to Kiva, but to contribute to all the things out there that could be world changing. Uh, Kiva does have a Drupal module, of course. Uh, some shout outs to David Moore, Crooked Number, and uh, Quicksell, Steve, Steve uh, Dykeman, that put together this Kiva module originally, and I helped come in and did some patches for them and whatnot. But it's mainly a community driven effort to make it so you can take your Kiva loans using the API, display them out on your website. <coughs> and that's here that down at the bottom, this, this, all these build tools we have. But this is also what's allowed uh, universities to do research and other such things. And there's so many, so many things that I could ask to contribute in that area. People often come up to me and say, oh, I love Kiva, I code, how can I help you guys? And I say, you know what? Actually, what I really could use is already out there in the issue queues there's a core bug in Drupal 7 for XYZ. Could you just go work on something that will benefit everybody because it's also going to benefit <laughs> us? Or the web form module, if anybody's feeling really inspired, anonymous submissions. We do a whole bunch of our um, sort of pulling in content like new partner applications and whatnot from using web forms because that's what web form is good at. But um, being able to save submissions, especially if you're out, say, in rural Uganda and you have the crappiest internet connection ever and you have rolling blackouts and you're filling out this long web form and you click submit and then all of a sudden the power goes out and you're like, ah, 30 minutes of work filling all that out. I wish I could have just saved that. Um, but we also haven't like gotten them to the ability to force them through the registration flow because it can be really confusing. It's All of that's not translated yet. We want to make it as easy as possible to partner with people. So this anonymous saving of the web form would be great, and there's a patch out there for that, and I've tried to, re I've done a little review or maybe a post or two in that queue, but it's a queue that's another one that's like 100 issues long. And anybody that has a little bit of Drupal chops could go do that. Or even if you didn't, if you're just a documentation person going and documenting uh, the various web form stuff, going in, um, just triaging issue queues, all this is super helpful. Uh, and that's, you know, not just Drupal 2, Civi CRM with, with the Drupal backend, all this stuff. Um, of course, you can contribute money, both directly to Kiva and to uh, putting loans in. <coughs> this is actually our support center, which is built out completely in Drupal. Uh, it, was a, it was a great project. It was, I think it ended up being 82 tickets over two weeks and, and sleepless nights at least five of those. But Drupal was what allowed something like this to happen very quickly and easily. And now anytime we have somebody that we want to show off as supporting us or whatever, people can just go in and easily add that and edit it. Um, contributing time, 
you can become a Kiva Fellows. This is a, another, like I was saying, web form. This is where we're asking fellows to sign up and join us and volunteer and say, go work for us in uh, Kenya, staying with our partner, Jehudi Kilmo, um, helping them to post loans up on the site or stuff like that. We have hundreds of those volunteers spread out across the world at any one time. And Drupal, of course, is helping us to manage that. But that's something, if you're interested, I'd love to give you more info about how you can contribute. <coughs> but ultimately, what I want you to take away is, is this is all about stories. It's all about people. Um, and it's not just about Kiva. It's about changing the world to be a better place. Unless you were Krell this morning and you were, uh, I think he was Lord of Overengineering, um, which was changing the world, I think, in a negative way. But most of you hopefully want to change the world for good. And there's lots of ways to do that, Kiva or not. And what it will end up providing for you is wonderful stories like this guy, Fatah, who says in his uh, thing here, he had, uh, has been photographed with his cat who he adores dearly. In the background, the rundown building you see, his so-called house, he's been living on his own for a very long time since after his divorce. His neighbor, who consider, considers him a father figure, has been taking care of him, cleaning up his place, cooking and doing the laundry for him, all at no expense, but he's been working as a loader forever, even today at his age. Here's what he said to the loan officer when the, he took the photograph of him. By petting my cat, all my exhaustion goes away. I love her. I share my food with her. She sleeps right by the foot of my bed and waits at the porch for me to return home. And it's, it's, you read this, and you know I promised you wouldn't have any wool cats. You did get a real cat. But you get really inspired because there's all these people out there that are getting connected in this way. And it's not just borrowers. It's lenders. I talked to a woman in rural Australia who was 65, felt like she wasn't sort of connected to her children anymore, just didn't have a lot of connection in the world, got on Kiva, joined a lending team, started making loans, started getting involved with other people, and now she says she wakes up every day and checks her team messages, and is, is like that's one of her most exciting pieces of the day, is going and seeing these loans that pop up, the new ones, the new countries, getting other people inspired and getting connected. And I never even would have thought you know, that we could connect the, the lenders as well and be inspiring them in this way. But I, I'll sort of leave you with the quote of, I think, Primal, our, our president and co-founder, certainly has thought of that. And he says here, if I see the masses, I won't act. If I see the one, I will. And I, I hope you take that away that it's not about great, overwhelming change. It's about small, incremental change. Find that one thing that you can change you know, out there in the world, in your life, in your company. It doesn't matter. Find that one small thing you can change. Change it, and you made the world a slightly better place for everyone involved, and that's going to build up to eventually solve those great goals that we have. So with that, I leave you a lovely borrower from Kyrgyzstan who I feel if you're out in poverty in the middle of nowhere making hardly any money and you're holding a goat in your arms, if you can still have a smile like that, then I feel like we can as well. And with that, I will... Uh, leave you guys open for questions, or if you were just so blown away by this as I see by your faces, then you're free to just take a moment and, and breathe that in. So you mentioned that you went from, is this on? Yeah, from Blogger to WordPress to Drupal, at least for the content side of Kiva. Why, what did WordPress not do that Drupal was allowing you to do? So that's actually a good question in the sense of one thing I didn't talk about. Um, one thing that a lot of vendors want to provide us with a lot of solutions to, <coughs> and that WordPress couldn't do well at the time, though somebody may have developed a solution for this, is the Drupal OAuth module is actually really great. And we have on Kiva an OAuth provider to allow for single sign-on. So even if you don't know what OAuth is, you might can get the the idea Google has single sign-on to other websites as well. Kiva has that ability. And Drupal's OAuth module, with just a little bit of customization for our side, made it so that we could just single-handedly, somebody could log into Kiva, and they would already be logged into the CMS as well, and then could go post their blog post and or make their comment with their um, Kiva lender identity tied to that. And that wasn't easily doable at all with WordPress. Among with that, there was a lot of small annoyances and things that we couldn't, the theming was more difficult, I think, for people. They never got it to look quite right. It looked like it was from the 90s. 
et cetera, et cetera, down the line. But that one thing was really what drove us tr moving that over. And then Blogger, you just um, simply couldn't do comments at all. And there was, I think, <coughs> even for places where, like with WordPress, we could, there was huge amounts of spam. And Drupal actually, not right out of the box, but with a couple modules combined together, like the spam module, the uh, Project Honeypot, and a couple others, has made it so we have about 400,000 blocked comments and about 3,000 published comments, which was otherwise would have just drowned our, our real commentary and conversation and all that spam. Okay. Oh, one more question. Uh, so I noticed that you have like zip.kiva, build.kiva, and even on kiva.org, there's some content which is not being served by Drupal. So what is the, I guess, the roadmap for Kiva to continue to, I guess, integrate more with Drupal? Are you going to replace any of those existing apps with Drupal? Sure. That's a, that's a fair question. Uh, the zip.kiva actually runs on Ruby on Rails believe it or not, and uh, most of the Kiva's running on a PHP code base, which has allowed us to pretty easily transfer a lot of that into Drupal in the first place. Um, I think it was originally kind of on the Zen framework, and there's also some cake PHP stuff in there for the build site. Uh, it's basically been a very um, problem area focused move. When something hits a wall and somebody can't move something over, or can't like write some custom code quickly to solve the problem, then that's usually where we say, hey, is this problem already solved in Drupal? Okay, great. We're going to move this piece over and put it in Drupal now. Like when the photo gallery came up or press quotes or various things like that, it wasn't so much a big concerted effort of let's move everything to Drupal. It was, hey, it's there. It works. This thing that we're currently doing doesn't work, and it's going to take a bunch of time. Drupal solves this problem. Let's use it. All right. Thank you. Sure thing. Anybody else? Don't be shy. Or it's okay to be shy, too. Oh, yes, in the back. You want to come to the microphone? Is that right? Um, I, I came a little late, so hopefully you didn't already answer this question. I'll be embarrassed. Um, if you have users in different countries, did you have any considerations about, like, bandwidth or access um, or any sort of, like, performance <coughs> issues? Yeah, abs loading? absolutely. It's a, it's a uh, constant battle. Um, one thing that we used was a tool called Charles Proxy, which you can actually use to turn down your bandwidth so that you can mimic um, what the connection is like for your person, say, out there in rural Uganda who's on a dial-up connection. Um, and we used that pretty extensively to figure out that all this was working. We also used a lot of tools of cat, like we used Memcache, Varnish, a bunch of stuff on the back end. Um, most important was that we're pulling this content via services API, sticking it in Memcache, so it's only loading once after it's loaded once, everybody else is just pulling that cache version, so it's very, very fast for them. But we still have problems of, of, of getting people from these various places connected and problems with, like, internationalizing for them so that they can read it in their own language rather than trying to have somebody hired who can read English. And surprisingly, Drupal actually solves that problem really well. What doesn't solve that problem is actually uh, laws about how you can work in various countries and so we've done it in some places, but um, sometimes for inter localizing to certain countries, just due to the international laws, that's actually what prevents us. Whereas Drupal, it's like, oh, sure, whenever they ask, I'm like, yeah, we can just turn on various things in internationalization module, get our content editors translating, and boom, we're done. Cool, thanks. Sure thing. <laughs>